नमस्कार वेलकम टू माई चैनल लीगल आउटलुक बाई दिलीप सिंह ऑन फोर्थ नवंबर 2020 ट्वेंटी दैट इज यस्टरडे सुप्रीम कोर्ट पास ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जजमेंट रिलेटेड टू मेंटेनेंस प्रोविजन टू वाइफ एंड चिल्ड्रेन एंड ए डिटेल गाइडलाइंस इज फ्रेम्ड फॉर ट्रायल कोर्ट फैमिली कोर्ट एंड डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट टू टेकल द ओवरलैपिंग जूरिस्टिक्शन रिलेटेड टू मेंटेनेंस एज वेल एज द कन्फ्लिक्ट कन्फ्लिक्टिंग ऑर्डर्स यूजअली पास इन द केस ऑफ मेंटेनेंस ऑर्डर ड्यू टू द वेरियस प्रोविजन्स प्रिवेलिंग हेयर इन फॉर द मेंटेनेंस पर्पज वाई वाई सो मच कन्फ्यूजन इन केस ऑफ मेंटेनेंस प्रोविजन्स वाई कन्फ्लिक्टिंग ऑर्डर्स आर पास बाय द कोर्ट्स वाई इवन इन द इवन इन द इंटरिम मेंटेनेंस केस द टाइम टेकन इज मोर देन टू थ्री ईयर्स so all these questions are being addressed have been ha, have been addressed by the supreme court in its judgment let us see what the fact is of the case on 2nd september 2013 neha files an application for interim maintenance under section 125 of crpc on behalf of herself as well as her minor son against minor son she filed this application against her husband rajnees in mumbai district court trial court on 4 24th of august 2015 after 2 years almost uh, the, that awarded interim maintenance of rupees 15000 per month to neha as well as 5000 per month to her son till from the date of from the date of filing of the um, application till the date of order and thereafter the amount of maintenance to the son was increased of for rupees 10000 per month Rajneesh filed an appeal in the form of criminal writ petition in the Bombay High Court and Bombay High Court also affirmed the order passed by the by the family court for the maintenance then the matter reaches to supreme court the name of the case is Rajneesh versus Neha and others and the criminal appeal number in supreme court is 730 oblique 2020 and this case was decided as i told you on 4th of november 2020 the the division bench which decided the case was was of judges uh, justice indu malhotra and justice r subhas reddy justice uh, indu malhotra authored this judgment the issue before supreme court was supreme court though in this case supreme court also affirmed the order of interim maintenance passed by high court as well as the district court but supreme court took this case as an opportunity to streamline the the litigations related to maintenance and provide the different parameters and procedures to be followed by the trial court and the district court and the family court uh, throughout the country considering the several several contradictory orders of the various high courts has supreme court took the task of framing the guidelines to be followed in the case of maintenance provisions under various act first supreme court appointed two senior judges so sorry two senior advocates ms ms uh, anita sinoy and uh, mr gopal sankar narayanan as amicus curiae in this case and thereafter supreme court for ensuring the wider participation from the through from throughout the country issued notice to national legal services authority and directed it to ensure that to to elicit the response from the various state legal services authorities of, so that a broad guidelines could be framed with the wider participation and responses first before we go further let us see what are the laws which which are related with the maintenance to wife and children the first the, in the first category we see the laws which are available to women irrespective of religious community community they belong to in this category the first law is special marriage act 1954 wherein section 4 provides for a marriage between any two persons who are citizens of india this is a secular nature of legislation and applicable to all persons who solemnize marriage in india Section thirty six of this Act provides pendente pendente like maintenance to wife 
if she does not have sufficient independent income to support herself. Section 37 provides for the grant of permanent alimony at the time of passing of the decree or subsequent thereto. Permanent alimony is the consolidated payment made by husband to wife towards her maintenance. The second law which is widely used uh, in India for maintenance by wife or woman or children as is section 125 of criminal procedure code 1973. The purpose and object of section 125 CRPC is to provide immediate relief to the applicant and it is a summary proceeding and only two conditions are required for moving an application in this provision. First the husband has sufficient means and second he neglects to maintain his wife or children who is unable to who are unable to maintain them herself or themselves this this 125 crpc provision is also applicable to the living arrangement cases and this was held by supreme court in chenu min versus virendra kumar singh kuswaha in 2011 1 ccc 141 that the provision is also available to man and woman having cohabited for a long time and in living relationship or in a de facto marriage. The third law which is which provides for maintenance provision is the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005 popularly known as DV Act. This provides a statutory remedy to an aggrieved woman who is, a, who is subjected to domestic violence in domestic relationship. In this case recently we saw that there is a very landmark judgment wherein because the act provided that only male adult will be made respondent against whom uh, under this provision can be moved by the aggrieved woman. But in Hiralal P. Harsora versus Kusum Narottam Das Harsora case we found that even the female person in female person who are in domestic relationship with uh, the aggrieved woman can be made respondent it, it is it was uh, the provision of law where the male adult was only made that is respondent within the definition of respondent was set aside founding it discriminatory and under section 21 so under section 20 of uh, this uh, dv act which provides maintenance granted under DV Act is to aggrieved women and children would be given effect to in addition to other provisions, other maintenance awarded under section 125 of CRPC or any other law in force. So this is this, this facility in DV Act is in addition to other. Section 26 of DV Act provides that any relief available under section 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22 may also be sought in other legal proceedings whether it is civil in civil court, family court or criminal court. Section 36 of DV Act provides that it shall be in addition or not in derogation of the provisions of law in any other law for the time being enforced. So these are the three, provi three laws and three provisions for maintenance which are available for women and children. In case of a Hindu wife, there are other two st statutes, two acts which also provide for the provision of maintenance. The first act is Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 1956. In this act section 18 provides that a Hindu wife shall be entitled to be maintained by his by her husband during her lifetime and in the subsistence of the marriage. She is entitled to make a claim for separate residence also without forfeiting her right to maintenance. Section 18, if we read section 18 with in conjunction with in association with section 23 of the act, then it states that the factor required to be considered for deciding the quantum of maintenance to be paid is uh, and the right to is if this right is not available to wife if she has been unchaste or uh, has converted to another religion. It is during and this right is specially available during the subsistence of marriage. Section 19 of this act provides for widowed daughter-in-law to claim maintenance against her father-in-law. And section 20 provides for maintenance of children and aged parents. 
The other law which is widely used is section 24 and 25 of Hindu Marriage Act. But there is there is a, a, a condition for using it that there must be a substantive proceeding pending before the court either in the form of annulment of marriage or divorce or um, restitution of conjugal right then only as a pending pending during the pendency of those proceeding this section 24 and 25 can be agitated and the application can be made before the family court or civil court for the purpose of securing maintenance so under this there is we, we see that there are so many laws available for that so why guidelines were required because a person because this is clear that an aggrieved person can approach to court under one or more act which I discussed right now. Because the nature and purpose of all these acts are different, distinct and independent. And to secure the interest of uh, women or children in a certain circumstances. But we find that these all remedies are over, of, of, of overlapping jurisdiction and it leads to me sometimes multiplicity of proceeding and conflicting orders. So this process required and the court found it found it essential to streamline all these processes so that the benefit could reach to the applicant in time and speedy in a speedy manner. Supreme Court in this case of Rajnish versus Neha gives certain directions to the courts throughout the India and for giving these directions and framing these guidelines Supreme Court agitated and exercised the powers it has been confirmed on under article 142 of the Constitution of India and these final directions are first while dealing with the issue of overlapping jurisdiction it directed that to ensure uniformity in the practice followed by family court, district court and magistrate throughout the country, it is directed that the court would consider an adjustment or set off of the amount awarded in the previous litigation before awarding any further amount in the subsequent litigation. So a clear cut direction is for set off of the earlier awarded maintenance amount. Second, it is, it is made mandatory for the applicant to give and to disclose all the previous proceedings that taking place between the parties and all the orders passed therein so that the subsequent proceeding can consider the effect of all those orders and avoid the conflicting orders. Thirdly, if the order passed in the previous proceedings requires any modification then the applicant has to move a, an appropriate application in that proceeding same proceeding so these were the three guidelines secondly on the point of payment of interim maintenance the, the supreme court categorically told that that the affidavit of disclosure of his assets and liabilities shall be filed by the both parties in all maintenance proceedings and Supreme Court has given as an annexure a complete affidavit in its format in complete form and uh, that affidavit will be filed by all the applicants. It shall be filed even in the pending proceedings not only on the fresh filing even in the family any pending proceeding in uh, family court or district court or magistrate throughout the country for deciding the maintenance case. The third point which uh, the third point on which the guidelines is given is that criteria for determining the quantum of maintenance. Supreme Court categorically said here that for determining the quantum of maintenance payable to an applicant the court shall take into consideration certain criteria such as the status of the parties the reasonable claim and wants of the claimant such as food, treatment, medical treatment, shelter, education, etc. Third, the independent income of the and property of the claimant. Fourth, the number of persons dependent on the non-claimant and his, his other liabilities he has to meet out. Third, uh, next, the payment capacity of non-applicant. 
next some even it said that some deciding about the payment as payment as well as the deciding on the point of the income of the non applicant some guess work can be is permitted for the district court and it has it is left to the discretion of the district court the other criteria is the cost of litigation the amount awarded in the other proceeding in the other proceeding and that must be adjust, uh, adjusted in the subsequent proceeding besides this the supreme court further added certain criteria like the age of employment age and employment of the parties right to residence where um, wife is uh, earning some income that that should be considered maintenance of minor children serious disability or ill health so these are the criteria which are developed and listed and enumerated by supreme court for the trial court and district court and magistrate while deciding the maintenance quantum of the maintenance and uh, even thereafter if trial court thinks certain other uh, factors to be considered in the given fact and circumstances of a particular case trial court will have the jurisdiction to exercise its discretion date the next uh, point on which the su supreme court dealt is date from which maintenance is to be awarded because there is always confusion about it some court grants it from the date of application some court grants it from the date of order in 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 some cases some other point is taken from uh, for uh, uh, giving the maintenance amount so in this in this supreme court case categorically one thing is said that in all cases the date of filing of the application for maintenance will be taken as the date from which maintenance is to be awarded the next point which was considered was the enforcement of orders of maintenance in on this point supreme court said that there are certain provisions like section 28a of hindu marriage act section 20 subsection 6 of dv act and section 120 out of crpc that provides certain provision for enforcement of order passed under the maintenance for the maintenance of so that provision will be followed in rest all other cases the order of maintenance may be enforced as a money decree of a civil court of a civil court as per the provisions of cpc and more particularly section 51 55 and 58 and 60 read with order 21 so on under this provisions the maintenance order will be enforced so we see that in this case supreme court has taken care of all the possible conflict areas which are being faced by trial court or district court or magistrate in the case of maintenance and the Su supreme court in this case particularly said that the if any application for maintenance is moved then preferably within 4 to 6 months it will be disposed of so these guidelines is are going to help a lot and facilitate the process of maintenance hope you find this entire discussion fruitful for you thank you very much for watching this video if you have not if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel please right now you share your views regarding this video thank you very much namaskar